Hello, brothers and sisters and Hard family. We had an initial meeting before our covenant prayer meeting to go over what we were to pray for. I learned so much from Pastor James' teachings and inspired me to be more confident to ask the intercessory group to pray for me personally and for Father Derek. He said that that was the number one assignment for them, as which was to attack marriages first. That was the first covenant a man and a woman make with God. The Lord had told us that as we began to move forward with land preparation, there would be much opposition to impede or hinder our progress. As I continued to watch Pastor James' video on covenant prayer, he inspired me to be grateful for the intercessory group and see the great power, value, and strength they have in my life and this ministry, because truly I would be nothing without them, and they were chosen to be assigned to me for this work. If they leave, then I fall, and this work goes to naught. They are the defense wall around us in this work. He also mentioned that the enemy always tries to bring division between the minister and the intercessory group by inciting offense, busyness, and many times jealousy, where the intercessors begin to compare and want the position of the minister, rather than seeing their value and power they have as a wall of protection around the minister. I encouraged the entire intercessory group to watch this, and I thought this would all give them a great understanding and great love for their role, and be now more willing to really cover us. So during our meeting, I brought up what the prayer topic should be for the covenant prayer group, and one of the intercessors received a different prayer point, so we had a back and forth as to which one was the will of God. The majority felt mine was too self-focused, while the other prayer points were for everyone. That had crossed my mind, but after the covenant prayer video and the testimony about the intercessors covering the man or woman of God, I thought they would understand. Division of offense already started, even before we began. I had to reach out to one of the souls and be honest with how I felt, and I'm so glad I did. We had a wonderful conversation where we forgave one another, saw each other's wrong, and even understood each other better. They admitted they immediately felt in their hearts, this is not fair just to pray for you. It's not fair to the group because everyone is expecting what God wants to do in their own lives. I understood where they were coming from. We ended up discerning the Lord did want us to pray the general prayer points and not just for what I wanted, so they were right in that regard. But in all of this, there was a hint of, what about me within the intercessory group? And that is Satan's first footing to get them to look at themselves and lose sight of why the Lord called them to the role, to this ministry, and to this mission to help me to finish this work. So I was burdened still in my heart and hurt after our first meeting before I had spoke to the soul. And the Lord gave me this message to address all my feelings. Holy Spirit began, My beloved, you have asked me to teach you how to pray, so I would like to do that, my little one. You are under much fire, I know, but this all will soon pass. Do not carry any offense in your heart. These poisonous darts you have been hit with do not allow to take root and form a stronghold in your mind about anyone, even your beloved. I want you to trust your intercessors. It pleased me very much that you submitted asking them for their discernment as well. In the ministry, the minister, although on the front line, their intercessors are his or her eyes, so there's the balance. It's important you listen to one another, submit to one another in honor, and most important, that the intercessors realize they are there to be a covering for you, the minister, and the work I've placed before them. That is one of the tools of the enemies to cause each soul to look too much at themselves for too long, including you. As a mother, you are called to carry the burdens of the whole group, carry their sufferings, hardships, and weaknesses, and hand them over to me, praying for them fervently, individually, as you would your own biological children. I want you to begin doing that more and more, taking them individually and daily into your morning prayers. That is how they are covered. As your spiritual children and as intercessors, it's important they realize their roles to cover you continually, to know your weaknesses, where sin can easily enter into, to know your burdens and the strategies and assignments against you so they can cover you in prayer. They are armed soldiers called into battle for you on my behalf. Their work, their call is so important to your destiny and that of the work I've called you to. If the enemy can get them offended or worse looking at themselves, then they too become less fervent in their prayer. After all, they are having issues too. That is what has happened to Mother Claire and Father Ezekiel. Men have become burned out in praying for them continually, forgetting the reason why I chosen them as heart dwellers and intercessors. Ministry is 10% of the work, but prayer is 90% of the work. The more you pray for your mother and father, the more effective they'll be in all things. The more impact, strength, and anointing they receive to do my work 
and the more reach the work will have when you pray in this way. When the ministry is blessed, so are the intercessors. Also, when one suffers, you all suffer. 1 Corinthians 12, verses 26. And whenever one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or when one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. Suffering is part of the call and most necessary to release graces backing up every prayer that is said for the minister and for the ministry. That is why the intercessors get hit so hard by Satan and his devils. And that is why it's important for you as a mother and the minister need to pray for them daily as they're covering you. Hmm, Holy Spirit, thank you. I haven't done that individually as I should. Holy Spirit continued. A minister should open up to the intercessors about their weakness and struggles as well, not bury or hide them. The yoke of ministry and intercessory group work is hand in hand. It's like a marriage made in heaven. And that is why Satan always goes after the intercessory group or the minister should break down the law of defense to destroy the church. And thought popped in, what about the rosary? It's so powerful. Holy Spirit chimed in. Yes, the rosary is very powerful and should be prayed daily by each intercessor, each Christian rather. I'm teaching you a different way to warfare. You'll be used in teaching others to pray this way and to save churches and ministries. I'm using this group to train you in such a way, first in brotherly love, which reigns supreme in the group, then in warfare. Yes, my beloved intercessors, this is a new season where I'm taking you in depth in prayer and spiritual warfare that is very strategic, so your prayers are more effective. When I relay to you a device or scheme of the devil, or when that is revealed to you by your leadership or your little mother, when I relay to you a device or scheme of the devil, or when that is revealed to you by leadership or your little mother, you pray to counterattack what's being done, or you pray in offense of what is to be assigned. I love to forewarn many times before it takes place so you're prepared and you equipped for battle and do not face an onslaught as so many Christians and churches do when curses are released or when assignments are assigned. So today I begin working with you to identify the root cause that becomes triggers that create a landmine that is used against you. Know this and share it with the group. They too should share what their triggers and weaknesses are so you know how to pray for them. They too pray for one another so in that everyone is covered. The focus of the intercessory group is to pray for you, the minister. Your role and focus is to pray for them, and they also pray for one another, and I cover all. This week, I will teach all of you how to map yourselves. That is very important that you know yourself. You start by first recognizing your buttons, writing each of them down. If you cannot think of any, ask me to help you and show you. Each of you have several different buttons. Then begin writing down why they are buttons. What experience you have that caused that wound? When the buttons are touched, how does that make you feel? What negative emotion do you experience when you recognize it? Then you'll see what demons are assigned to you. I will lead you in mapping out patterns within your family, your bloodlines, to get to the root cause of each issue. I want to deal with the roots, my beloved ones. It's the roots that need to be cut and destroyed in our lives that cause strongholds in your lives and that of others. This will also teach you how to effectively deliver souls. There's a place for casting out devils, and there's a place for deeper inner healing. And that is the way I'm moving in my body this season more and more. If the intercessors and my body is wounded and infested with infections, how effective can they be in their authority and power over demons? Simply they can't. So thank me for the training and yield to the leading of my spirit now. And that was the end of Holy Spirit's message. So found I'm doing a follow-up message to show how to map yourselves and how to map your family so you can pray more strategically. God bless you, family, and please pray for us.